Welcome to SVR IAS Academy. Come on, India.com is our website. In today's Hindu newspaper analysis, you are going to learn so many topics which are useful for the IAS 2017 examination. Today's date is November 4th, 2016. First, let's discuss the important articles which are published in today's Hindu newspaper's front page. Now, in the home page, you can see the GST Council fixes four level GST rate structure. This article is important for the IAS examination. Here, you can see Indo Dipatan border force and Chinese forces phase off in Damchok. From geography map point of view, you have to locate where Damchok is located and few important points about Ladakh region and also some points about line of actual control. The left side you can see FCRA licenses of 11,000 NGOs expire. Few days back we discussed in detail about FCRA. FCRA stands for Foreign Contribution Regulation Act 2010 and also we discussed about Foreign Contribution Regulation Rules 2011 and also we said that is important for the examination both for prelims and mains examination. In the page number 12, there is a continuation of the article of FCRA license expired for 11,000 NGOs. The important points in this article is which is the what is the ministry responsible for implementing the Foreign Contribution Regulation Act that is Ministry of Home Affairs is the ministry responsible for implementing the Foreign Contribution Regulation Act and registering the NGOs and cancelling the license of NGOs under national security on the grounds of national security. So there is no need to discuss about this article in detail because few days back we already discussed in detail. So watch the earlier video lecture to get complete picture about FCRA. Let's come back to the home page where you can see the article on GST. So the four level GST rate structure have been approved recently by GST council. So G about GST Council we discussed in our earlier video lecture. That's why you have to watch our video lectures continuously so that you can have a complete picture on so many topics because it is difficult to discuss all the topics in one video lecture. So the four tier GST structure of 5%, 12%, 18% and 28% has been recently approved by GST Council. So the GST Council has approved multiple rates ranging from 0 percentage to 28 percentage. Zero tax rate will be applicable on the essential items so that poor will not suffer because of the implementation of the goods and services tax. Ultra luxuries, demerit goods and sin goods will attract a highest GST rate of 28% for 5 years. So each and every point is important for the prelims examination. Ultra luxuries, demerit goods, sin goods will attract a highest GST rate of 28 percentage for the period of first five years. So take your dictionary and search what do you mean by sin good and what do you mean by demerit goods. In economics, demerit goods is a good or services when consumed it is considered as unhealthy, degrading and otherwise socially undesirable due to the negative effects on the consumers. So, simply demerit good is a goods 
or services when consumed by consumer it produces unhealthy effects on the consumer themselves examples of the demerit goods are tobacco alcoholic beverages recreational drugs junk foods gambling etc a sin tax or first discuss about sin good sin goods are certain goods deemed harmful to the society examples are alcohol tobacco drugs soft drinks fast food coffee gambling etc so a sin tax is a excess tax specially levied on the sin goods some states were opposing the multiple rates multiple gst rates and finally it was overcome by the gst council in the consumer inflation basket cpi stands for consumer price index in that nearly more than half of the consumer basket items including food grains its gst rate kept at zero so that poor will not suffer because of the implementation of gst the lowest slab that is five percentage will be applicable on items of common consumption and the rates 12 percentage and 18 percentage will be considered as two standard rates so bulk of the goods and services will attract either 12 percentage or 18 percentage gst tax rate so these bulk of the items include fast moving consumer goods most of the services are expected to become costlier because at present service tax is 15 percentage 15 percentage service tax at present in future it will become 18 percentage so if service tax becomes 18 percentage then you have to pay higher fees to join any coaching institute including ias institutes at present the service tax is 15 percentage because most of the services in future will be included in the 18 percentage tax slip and one more term which is coming in this news is about white goods what do you mean by white good so now let's see the definition of white good and also compare the definition of white good with the brown goods so in economy white goods and brown goods are nothing but electronic devices and appliances which represent the consumer goods so that it will enable the individuals to take a joy in entertainment or enhance their life so brown good means so brown good include electronic items like television dvd players stereos and home entertainment systems white goods are the items like refrigerators rangers freezers washers now let's move to the page number 12 where you can see the continuation of the first page article here there is a tax slab so there will be two kinds of states after implementing the gst some states may face revenue loss and some states may face revenue gain so what about states which are going to face revenue loss central government gives central government gives constitutional guarantee to compensate the revenue loss for the first five years so for the first five years whatever the revenue loss that state is going to face will be compensated by central government so every year central government is going to commit nearly 50000 crore rupees for this how central government will raise fund for this so central government will raise the fund by imposing additional cess on the luxury goods and 
on other items like sin goods, aerated beverages will attract additional cess and the fund collected from additional cess and clean environment cess clean environment cess will be collected by the center and the fund will be utilized for states which are facing revenue loss so central government gives constitutional guarantee to the states for making good the losses for a period of five years don't forget the five years it can be asked in the prelims and other examinations in case the fund raised from the cess is found to be excess of the money needed to compensate the states means the excess fund nature will be decided by gst council where to use the excessive fund it will be decided by gst council goods and services tax will subsume multitude of cesses during which are currently in practice these cesses include swachh bharat cess krishi kalyan cess and education cess this is the important area for the prelims examination so what are all the cesses which will be subsumed under gst so swachh bharat cess krishi kalyan cess and education cess one more prelims point is that clean environment cess will not be subsumed under gst so clean environment cess will be collected separately so the funds or revenues collected from clean environment cess will also be used to fund the compensation one more point is that on the expiry of the 5 year period the cesses will not be collected and in the home page you can see another article our prime minister which is for debate on simultaneous polls for mains 2016 the topic of holding the simultaneous elections for lok sabha and state assemblies is an important area for gs paper 2 we expect one question from this area so prepare thoroughly especially students who are going to appear for the mains 2016 examination holding simultaneous elections for the lok sabha and state assembly carries many advantages and some disadvantages as well so you should be able to give the balanced view on this topic in the page number 12 the con continuation of this article has been published one advantage of holding the simultaneous elections to lok sabha and state legislative assembly is that frequent application of the model code of conduct and poll funding can be avoided for example in some states after holding the lok sabha elections within 6 months or 8 months separate election was being held to the state legislative assemblies of some states so when election is announced model code of conduct will come into force it severely restricts the business activities and lot of restrictions will be put in place and also to conduct each election thousands of crore rupees have been spent so if state legislative assembly and lok sabha elections were held simultaneously we can avoid frequent application of the model code of conduct and expenditure can also be minimized the issue of holding simultaneous elections started immediately after independence so the first general election to the lok sabha and all state legislative assemblies were held simultaneously in 1951 52 and the practice of holding the simultaneous elections continued till 1957 62 and 67 general elections but the cycle got disturbed after dissolution of the some of the state legislative assemblies in 1968 after that 
simultaneous elections were never held till today. Law Commission of India in its 170th report on reform of the electoral laws has suggested to hold simultaneous elections to the Lok Sabha and state legislative assemblies. Law Commission says that simultaneous elections provide stability in governance. Now let's discuss various compelling factors for holding the elections simultaneously. Simultaneous elections would reduce the massive expenditure incurred for conducting the elections separately every year. So we can cut down the hold cost significantly. So thousands of crore rupees can be saved and that fund can be used for the welfare of the poor and downtrodden people. As already we discussed, imposition of the model code of conduct in the pole bond area puts a hold on the entire development program. For example, government cannot announce any new program and also cannot give the development aids of the already existing program. So it affects the normal governance in a pole bond area. So the frequent elections lead to the imposition of the model code of conduct over a prolonged period of time that leads to the policy paralysis and governance deficit. So frequent elections leads to the disruption of the normal public life and it is impacting the functioning of essential services. How? For example, if elections are held frequently, Political parties will hold rallies which will disturb the road traffic and also leads to the noise pollution. If simultaneous elections are held, the speed of disruption can be limited to a certain period of time. And if elections to the Lok Sabha and state legislative assemblies are held simultaneously, it will free the crucial manpower the manpower is often deployed for prolonged periods on the election duties. For example, thousands of mobile companies of central armed police forces have been deployed while conducting the elections to the Lok Sabha and state legislative assembly. If elections are held simultaneously, we can free this manpower and can be de deployed where it is needed the most. So, issue of holding simultaneous elections has some drawbacks as well. What are all the drawbacks? Point number one. Holding simultaneous elections may confuse voters. Indian voters are not highly educated. So, Indian voters may get confused whether they are voting for the local or candidates for the assembly or whether they are voting for the MP that is a candidate to the Lok Sabha. So they may get confused. If elections are held separately to the Lok Sabha and state legislative assembly, politicians often come back to the voters for seeking the vote. If simultaneous elections are held to both Lok Sabha and assembly for five years, the chance of politician meeting the voters is less, is another drawback. And third point is that if elections to the Lok Sabha and state legislative assemblies are held separately, we can avoid mixing of the local issues and national issues in the minds of voters. So voters should not get confused whether it is a local issue or it is a national issue. If elections are held separately, voters will vote in the assembly elections based on the local interest and if elections are held separately to the Lok Sabha, voters mostly vote on the national interest. And fourth, the need for huge infrastructure and manpower. Even in the recently conducted West Bengal election, which was held in six phases because of the security concern. Think of a situation, even if, if election commission fails to 
that in West Bengal elections should be conducted in six phases because of the security concern. Holding of the simultaneous elections will go in multiple phases for a prolonged period of time. Because of the lack of security manpower, lack of adequate security manpower and infrastructure. Here infrastructure means we need electronic voting machines in high number. So holding simultaneous elections may go for many months. These are the few drawbacks of holding the simultaneous elections to the Lok Sabha and State Legislative Assembly. So prepare thoroughly on this topic and it is one of the very very important area for mains 2016 and 2017 examination as well. Now let's discuss another important article that has been published in the front page of the Hindu newspaper is indo Tibetan Border Police Force and Chinese forces face off in Demchok. Demchok is a place in Jammu and Kashmir, especially in the Ladakh region. In this background, you should know about Demchok in detail because you may get a map based question on this topic in prelims 2017. Demchok is a village and a military encampment in the lay district of the Jammu and Kashmir. In this image, try to locate the Demchok. So it's a Jammu and Kashmir. Here Demchok is located in the lay district. Line of actual control passes close to the Demchok village and Demchok sector is a part of old silk route which connects to the Mansarovar lake and other Tibetan regions. One plus point is that this region is plain when compared to the other parts of Jammu and Kashmir and lies at the low altitude. It is easy to reach the Mansarovar lake via the Tenchok sector if China allows it, allows Indian pilgrims. India was demanding China to allow its pilgrimage to reach the Mansarovar lake through Tenchok sector. Indus river passes close to the Demchok village. So these are the important points you should know about Demchok. It can be asked in the prelims examination. Another article published in this newspaper is asset being sold openly. Delhi Commission for Women. You might have heard about asset throwing on women. If you read a newspaper regularly, almost every week you can come across a news asset has been thrown on women for not accepting the love or some other reasons. Asset throwing is also known as vitriolage. Vitriolage is another term for asset throwing. Supreme Court has given an excellent judgment few years back. So asset should not be sold by shops openly. They have to get the ID proof of the buyer. Recently, Delhi Commission for Women has conducted an operation to purchase asset openly from 11 districts in Delhi and its members were able to purchase the asset openly. But Supreme Court judgment categorically bans the open sale of asset. Open sale means simply selling the asset without getting any ID proof of the buyer. So the shop owners has to get the ID proof of the buyer then only they have to sell the asset. So in this background we advise you to prepare thoroughly on the Supreme Court judgment and the asset throwing and what are all the various steps taken by the government of India for the rehabilitation of the asset attack victims. It's one of the very important area for the mains examination every year. Supreme Court 
in its Lakshmi versus Union of India case given a judgment on how to treat the acid attack patients. It has given several guidelines. These guidelines are very important for the examination. Full medical assistance should be provided to the victims of acid attack and private hospitals should provide free medical treatment to such victims. So, private hospitals also should provide free medical treatment to the victims of acid attack. One more important point is that no hospital or clinic in India should refuse treatment citing the lack of specialized facilities. Actions can be taken against hospital or clinic for refusal to treat the victim of acid attack under the provisions of Section 357C of the Code of Criminal Procedure 1973. So these are the some of the important guidelines published by the Supreme Court in treating the victims of acid attack. In another historic judgment, Supreme Court ordered to place acid attack victims in the disability list so that they can avail all the benefits under disability list. In the Parivardhan Kendra vs. Union of India case, in the Lakshmi versus Union of India case, Supreme Court said that it's a duty of the state to take the full responsibility for the treatment and rehabilitation of the victims of acid attack. So it is a full responsibility of the state to provide treatment and rehabilitation of the victims of acid attack as per the guidelines provided in the Lakshmi vs Union of India case. So let's prepare thoroughly on the acid attack. One more article that has been published in the newspaper is First Titanium Project Starts Test Production. It is India's first titanium project by Saraf Group in the Kanjam districts of Odisha state. There are some terms coming like pig iron. Pig iron is nothing but when iron ore is taken from the earth and it undergoes melting. During the melting process, pig iron comes as an intermediate product. Pig iron is an intermediate product which contains 92% iron. So another important point is that the raw material for the titanium is ilmenite. So ilmenite is the raw material for titanium. It is procured from the Odisha. First important point is that titanium has low density but high strength. So because of that it is mixed with other alloys or other compounds to make the material which can be used in several sector. So the important property of titanium is it is low density and high strength and also it is highly resistant to corrosion in sea water and in chlorine. Titanium is distributed widely in the earth crust. It occurs in a number of mineral deposits especially in the ilmenite and in rutile which are widely distributed in the earth crust and in lithosphere. Titanium is usually alloyed with iron, aluminium, vanadium and molybdenum to make the strong and lightweight alloys for the aerospace, automotive, agri-food and medical processes and orthopedic implants, dental instruments, mobile phones etc. So, titanium has so many applications. So, finally, you must know that two very useful properties of titanium is a corrosion resistance and it has the highest strength to density ratio of any metallic element. So, two properties you should never forget. One is corrosive resistance. Second, 
titanium has highest strength to density ratio for any given metallic element another article that published in the newspaper is about voter has the right to know the candidate's qualification every 5 years once we are we as a indian voters face so many elections like general elections to the lok sabha state legislative assembly panchayat and municipal elections many candidates are contesting in each elections some are educated some are uneducated some candidates claim that they have the degree now it is the right of every indian voter to know the candidates qualification so according to the supreme court judgment every voter has the fundamental right to know the educational qualification of the candidate and the candidate has a duty not to lie about his or her academic past so let's prepare on this article in the page number 13 another important article that has been published is about india bangladesh joint exercise and sampradhi 7 sampradhi 7 can be asked in upsc another examination sampradhi 7 is a joint military exercise between india and bangladesh so sampradhi 7 is the 14 day joint military exercise between india and bangladesh sampradhi exercise is a defense cooperation hosted alternatively by both countries and this year is the 7th edition of the sampradhi exercise so that's why it is called as sampradhi 7 sampradhi 7 was held in bangladesh and it focuses on the counter insurgency and counter terrorism operations first exercise that is sampradhi 1 was held in jorgat in assam in 2010 so let's prepare thoroughly on the india bangladesh relations in gs paper 2 another important article published in the newspaper is india opens iits to the nepal students india for the first time opens iit entrance examinations to the nepal students and exam will be conducted in the nepal's capital that is kathmandu This was announced by the Indian President Pranab Mukherjee on his visit to the Nepal recently, and every year India provides more than three thousand scholarship to the Nepal students for studying in India, and India always committed to the neighborhood first foreign policy. India Nepal relations is always important for the mains examination. UPSC already asked so many questions in the previous mains examinations. in mains 2016 also you may expect one question in the gs paper 2 on india nepal relations so prepare thoroughly on this topic apart from these topics also prepare thoroughly on the one rank one pension scheme and its implementation why it is criticized by many and also prepare thoroughly on the today's articles or editorials because of the paucity of time we are closing the today's hindu newspaper discussion if you like our video lecture you can share this video with your friends who are preparing for the civil services examination invite them to subscribe to our youtube channel that is svr ias academy so that whenever we release a video you and your friends can get instant notification if you are interested to get our prelims video lectures mains online video lectures and current affairs online video lectures prelims test series and mains test series will be conducted monthly once under integrated combo course for ias 2017 batch contact us via whatsapp our whatsapp number is 8098099922 and the cost of the course will be 6750 for one year and the course validity ends in october 2017 so let's prepare well and all the best for your ias exam preparation and thank you